The title of my short presentation has been already announced, so I simply go to the detail. Um, I believe everyone who sits right here right now should have heard about international criminal courts and tribunals that appeared all over the world, in Europe as, uh, in, as well as in Japan. The main aim was to judge people committed the most cruel, dreadful crimes, especially during the Second World War. These courts created ad hoc in order to give a judgment about only particular cases are not easy to appraise from law perspective. There were many, many allegations they must have deal with. Um, the most controversial is that some experts doubt if they had been fully legally established. If so, why their sentences should have been executed. The ideas concerning establishment of the general international criminal court are not so old as we may guess. To be honest, they appeared just after the First World War, so it is over a hundred years now. It is also, also easy to conclude that these ideas um, were reviewed after the Second World War, but the initiative has been frozen for several dozen years due to the world situation called the Cold War. It was absolutely impossible then to create an organ with an international jurisdiction when the most powerful countries are about to launch a new successive war. Another step on the way to establish mention Kurt was founding two international crimi criminal tri tribunals with only local jurisdiction. I mean, the International Criminal uh, Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia and the International Criminal Court for Rwanda in 1993 and 1994. These tribunals are also difficult to assess whether they effective enough or not. That is why the General Assembly of the United Nations Organization decided to bring into existent, existence a brand new court known nowadays as the International Criminal Court, the ICC. The General Assembly has been working hard for two years and eventually in 1999 the general voting took place and 120 states decided to adopt the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. Only seven countries voted against and 21 abstained. The statute came into force in July 11, 2002. Before I go on to the next issue, um, which is problems that ICC must cope with lately, I would like to point out some basic information. The International Criminal Court is a permanent institution and the basis for its functioning is the Rome Statute. The Rome Statute is an international binding treaty. The ICC's premises is in the city of Haag, the Netherlands, and the court consists of 18 judges chosen by contracting parties. The International Criminal Court is independent of the United Nations organization as well of other states and other organizations. Um, what is worth mentioning, the ICC has its own legal entity. Only individuals, I mean private persons, are liable for crimes to the ICC. The jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court is complementary, so it means that this organ is able to prosecute criminals only in two cases. One, when national courts are unwilling to do so, or two, when national courts are unable to prosecute, as I said. When one stands uh, the ICC's trial, it means that there was a charge brought against him. That's obvious. But what crimes he had to commit to be judged by the ICC? Article 5 of the Rome Statute states that there are four crimes that individuals may be accused of. It is 1. The crime of genocide, 2. Crimes against humanity, 3. War crimes, and 4. The crime of aggression. The problem lies in here, as the first three mentioned have their compre comprehensive definitions either in the Rome Statute or in the other international treaties. But the last one, the crime of aggression, remains undetermined. Hypothetically, if a crime that is not one of the three mentioned crimes would happen, the ICC may face some difficult but important 
problems for one of the grounds of its working is not in force. When discussed, the definition will appear. It's hard to foresee, perhaps in next five, perhaps in 10 years, 50. Another issue is non-signing the Rome Statute by some states or signing but not ratifying yet. The three most populous countries are not fully bound by the ICC's jurisdiction, it's USA, or not bound at all, China and India. The data from July 2013 shows that many states, particularly from Asia and some from Africa, have neither signed nor ratified nor acceded to the state. Examples, Turkey, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, Libya or Kazakhstan. Such a situation leads to decreasing effectiveness of the court. On the other hand, it's hard, uh, it is not possible to say for sure if, con if it countries for all over the world would sign the treaty, it would be a perfect solution. Actually, it's not an individual situation. Personally, I'm not convinced it would be ever possible. Um, as it was aforementioned, the ICC has its own legal entity and it suggests a question. So what? The International Criminal Court has no army, no own troops that would help somehow to gain effectiveness. It is another obstacle that restrains the ICC from fulfilling wholly its obligations. Let's have a look at the United Nations Security Council. Next issue I would raise uh, is the Security Council's authorization to propose the ICC a motion concerning a procedure commencement reward, remand or procedure suspension for 12 months. Such a motion has to be considered positively by the court. Furthermore, after these 12 months, another motion with the same issue uh, might be proposed and again and again. It looks like a huge interference in the court independence. The basis for action like this is Article 16 of the Rome Statute. It becomes clear now that unanimous operation of permanent members of the Security Council may effectively restrain the ICC from commencing or continuing procedure in particular cases inconvenient to one of the five states. If one pay much attention to the area where all the cases are being conducted, it will be uh, perhaps a bit surprising that all of them take place in Africa. That is why the African Union accused somehow uh, the ICC. It deals only with African cases. Well, to be honest, that is undoubtedly true, but you should take into consideration that all crimes judged by the ICC were committed after the court's competence had came into force. Another allegation referred to the weight of financing the court. Critics raised that funds countries pay for the ICC are not sufficient enough to guarantee its effectiveness. Uh, they also complain about enormous bureaucracy. Too many officials are employed and the amount of them should be customized to the real needs. Others pay attention to the fact that the scope of defendants' right is broadened to the hazardous limit. Back for a while to the Africans' matter, some politicians from that continent name the ICC as a tool of Western imperialism. They raise also the ICC, uh, concentrate its efforts on Africa and tries to turn a blind, blind eye to the events that happen closer to the ICC's premises. Regardless of whether the critics or enthusiasts are right, it must be determined that the international institution, so young and inexperienced, cannot already be run properly and be efficient as well. The International Criminal Court has existed for a little over 10 years, so it would be advisable to refrain strict, opi strict opinions yet. The functioning of the ICC depends only on the country's willingness and I take a firm stand it will never function impeccably. But it should not stop from doing things. Whether the ICC is effective or should its work be continued, we'll know in many years from now. All we need now is right perspective and time, a lot of time.
Personally, I would be an optimistic, but only the future will show if I'm right. Thank you.